Hi, I'm Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to show you how to use a fling called the VMware IO Analyzer, specifically version 1.5. For this demonstration, I've gone ahead and downloaded the IO Analyzer OVA off the fling site, uh, which I'll include a link to that in the comments, and deployed a pair of them to my virtual environment here. As you can see, I've got uh, a, an A and a B to denote the two different machines and really all that entails is going to file deploy OVF template and you browse to the path of the OVA that you've downloaded and basically answer questions on where to put it pretty straightforward so the first thing that I would recommend doing is editing the first machines to change the disk size I've gone ahead and done it here by default disk 2 is going to be 100 megabytes in size now the issue with that is that that's where it's going to be doing the disk test where it does the reads and the writes and 100 megabytes is small enough that in most arrays even a smaller array that amount of data can live in cache or RAM so you're gonna get some very misleading results it's gonna look like you have you know tons of IOPS available or tons of throughput uh, simply because nothing's actually hitting the underlying disk system and that's what you're trying to test so in my case, I have uh, about a gig of cache in there. I've gone ahead and set this one to 4 gig uh, uh, disk size, and B is also set to a 4 gig disk size, just to make sure everything's hitting disk as much as possible. Now you'll notice mine was, uh, if I go back into this one, uh, it's a thin disk. That's simply because I am on NFS, and I don't have a plug-in for Synology to force it to be thick. In, the most, in most cases, you'd want this to be eager thick zeroed. Uh, so that's why there's a discrepancy there. If you're using VMFS, go ahead and uh, uh, make sure that's eager thick zeroed. So to start with, I'll power these on. There's the A and the B. And the way the I.O. analyzer works is you really have to only know the details for one of the analyzers. And you're going to connect to that using your browser and set up all the workloads that you want to do for all the analyzers on a single like kind of a master analyzer which is pretty convenient I like the way that that works now the one caveat is you have to go into the console of all the analyzers before you start and log in and there's a little message here that tells you uh, log in with root and VMware uh, and then you can connect to the IP of the VM I just use the the IP is actually displayed right here uh, because there's VMware tools running but you could go through these steps if you want to so let's run login. All I, hit, all I did was hit enter to log in. Root VMware. You'll get a gray desktop, and that means that this machine is ready to go. I'll drag that up a little bit. So again, we'll do B now. And if you forget and you try connecting to the IP, a little nag screen will show up saying that you need to log in first. So you can see at the bottom it says log in. It's the default selection. If you accidentally move it around, just arrow back up root oop, root VMware and this one is now ready to be used so you've done all the prep work to get the analyzers ready to rock Now I'm going to connect to the A machine just because it's the first one on the list which is 10.0.0.103 and let's get that going so 10.0.0 I've already got it saved and it's going to tell you that Internet Explorer sucks which everyone I think already knows but that's all I have on this uh, demo machine so uh, download Chrome <laughs> and we'll go through the workflow so I'm gonna skip the test scheduler because we're not going to be scheduling anything but we're really concerned with config configuration of the workload and then viewing the results in this demo there's a lot of other things you can play with here but that's what we're gonna go over today so click on workload generator and you'll want to enter the host uh, root passwords the name and the passwords for the uh, different VMware hosts the reason for this is the analyzer can then suck in kind of the same stats you see from ESX top directly into the results so you get more information out of the test you don't have to necessarily uh, do it for all of them I'm gonna go ahead I've got three hosts so I'm just gonna uh, plug them all in so just name and password and my DNS is set up that I could just do the short names. Otherwise, uh, if you need to do the fully qualified names, go ahead. So there's my three hosts in the lab. And as I do that, it looks on the host and figures out what virtual machines are on there. So for ESX012, as I'm all listed. So I'll start with by picking the A analyzer. 
and telling it to run a test that a friend of mine actually asked me to run uh, for Exchange 2007. So I'll add that. Then we'll pick the B analyzer, which is here. And we'll run a test for large 64K block SQL. So we're going to be generating these two workload types, these workload specs, on these two analyzers, A and B. And it also gives you the courtesy of telling you what the IP is and what the host that they're on. That's kind of cool. Uh, and you can make, you can save this config. I've got a default config here called Wall Network. We'll make uh, another Wall Network video. You can save that, and then you don't have to go through all this work next time. You can just grab video or whatnot, and then load it. The default duration is two minutes. It's a bit long for the video. I'm just going to turn it down to 30 seconds, uh, in which it's going to nag me uh, and let me know that that's a bit short. So I'm going to say, okay, that's all right. And the progress of the test will be down here in blue, right above the copyright. So first it's going to do an initialization, then it's going to actually kick off the test. So if you go on an IO analyzer and you don't see anything going on, that's okay. Uh, it usually takes about half a minute or so for it to actually kick off the test, and that can vary depending on your environment and how many analyzers you're running. Uh, so if you watch the, the information down here, I think it uh, goes ahead and tells you the, the test is running and gives you kind of a, a duration of the test uh, once it's actually kicking off. So there we go. We're starting the workload generators, which means it should uh, show up on here in just a second. And there we go. I can actually pull up both of them, and you can see both real time. And if you feel like watching it, you can go to results display and turn this down to a one-second frequency. And you can see the IOPS it's generating on this workload, the throughput, you know, kind of head, you know, CPU utilization. If this is sitting at 100%, the, the, the workload is uh, too much for this analyzer. And then the actual profile of the workloads in the bottom left corner. So the 8K is telling me this is the exchange workload. Uh, and this one down here, 64K, that's the, the SQL workload. So there we go. That's not a very good test. 30 seconds, you're, you're probably going to hit a lot of cash in that amount of time. Uh, so do longer. But for the sake of the video, we can at least now see that you know, we got some results at least to, to look at. So it's going to uh, finish the workload and it's going to say that it's compiling it and all that good stuff. And then we can see the results in uh, the, the results chart area. So make sure to let this finish. And this last part where it says it's collecting results, that's important. All right, so the messages have gone away. You'll just go up to this little doodad here, view test results. It's actually a chart, just a little hard to see, I think. Uh, we can pull, this is the latest results off the wall network video test uh, that was taken, and we can see the amount of IOPS, both read and write, throughput, things like that, uh, that are going on with the workload. Sometimes you might have to scroll a little bit, depending on the size of your screen. And then we can see ESX top, which is pretty sweet, because this is host level stuff, because we gave it the root access. So we can see all sorts of latency values and things like that. So we had, what, about 14 milliseconds on A and 18 milliseconds on B. Not amazing, but not terrible. You know, it's a bit worse for write, uh, which I guess makes sense because that's a bit more intensive on RAID 5. It takes a little more more time, and I'm running uh, all SSDs. So you can get some pretty interesting information out of this, uh, this system here. And you can drill in even deeper to a specific analyzer. And again, the charts look pretty bad because they're only 30 seconds long, so there's not a lot of data here. If you did it for over five minutes or something, it would be a lot more information. Uh, you can look at CPUs, you know, on and on. You can get all sorts of information that really helps you correlate where your bottleneck may be, where there's some uh, opportunity to to tune or optimize your your uh, array or the, the hosts that are talking to the array, and etc. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.